Hey everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. Today, just for funsies, we'll go over some of the basics you can do to your 4L60 if you're just absolutely dead set on not listening to anybody with good sense and totally convinced that you can build it if you build it right and money doesn't matter to you because you get all your parts for free or they pay you to use parts because 4L80s are 500 bucks. So if you're just absolutely set on building a 4L60, this is a mid-level build. These are the mandatory upgrades that you'll want to do to live behind a 400, maybe 500 horsepower motor. It'll live for a while behind, <clears throat> it'll live for a while behind a 400 horsepower motor. It'll live an unknown time behind a 500 horsepower motor. And this is not intended to be a how to rebuild your 4L60. You need to have basic transmission rebuilding skills. You need to have basic transmission rebuilding tools, which require include a fixture, a press to somehow get snap ring players off. You need a special tool. You can build it, make it, buy it. Um, for the low reverse drum, you, you're going to need tools. If you're buying them all, you're going to wind up spending a little over 200 bucks on them. Um, so the things that I would consider mandatory in a 4L60, first up, the wide band for 2.4. All these part numbers are for wittrans.com, and I'll link it to in the description below. That's where I buy all my transmission parts. Um, so first up, 2.4 wide band, not Kevlar. Kevlar stops bullets. It's not a high friction material. It, it, it's not what you need in a performance transmission, okay? Get Kevlar out of your head. Get red altos out of your head. Get all this crap that you see on the power block out of your head. I get that they did it on Gas Monkey Garage. It doesn't work in the real world, okay? The part number for the wide 2.4 band, and you can find any one you want. It's uh, You want the one that's 2 and 5 eighths wide. It's N74020BAHP. HP is for high horsepower because they'll live if you build them right. So I've heard. Uh, next up, you want the Transgo No Yo-Yo Hardened Pump Rings, and that part number is Transgo 700 PK. Uh, I usually do a 10 vein pump if I feel like I need to do a pump or if there's been any metal through it. The stock one on most LS 4L60s is a 13 vein. They say there's a little more volume with a 10 vein, but nobody really knows. It's hard to quantify, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. <clears throat> I always do the Sonics pump spring. It's S74536A. The Sonics boost valve, that is S74507TEK-1. Corvette servos, mandatory at a minimum, A74905BK-1. You want a new 2.3 shift solenoid, that's the Sonics part, s 747 41S-1A. The Beast Sunshell kit, there's newer, better, later, greater things out there, but the Beast is the minimum that I would put in. Right? This is the minimum build. That part number is A74624A. You want the dual cage 29 element sprag. That's A74658D. You're still going to want the Transgo shift kit. I leave some of that out, but it comes with most of the parts you need. That's going to be T74171E. The total for all that goodness comes to $425.83. Once you get all that, you're going to want the Ray Bestos Choline Steel Module for $110. This is it here. The SKU is 1392 for globaltransmissionparts.com. 
and the Ray Bustos High Energy Friction Module. These are the clutches you want. You don't want, forget the Z-Pack, for, definitely forget Red Altos. Get these. These are $69.95. So, all together, you want 110, 170. So, you're at 700 bucks in parts before converter or tools or whatever. And that'll live for a while behind 400 horsepower, no problem. If you're going to make big horsepower, big, big horsepower, 500, 600, I wouldn't even attempt it without the 4L79 performance kit. Um, and I understand that there's some applications of where you're just stuck with a 4L60, right? Like, if you have a C5 Corvette, there's really no feasible, economical way to get a 4L80 in there. So you got to do what you got to do. But anyway, this comes from 4L79.com. It is a custom uh, custom input housing. It uses T8 Turbo 350 uh, clutches. It has the billet top hat. It's insanely strong. Um, Oh yeah, and the, the cap is threaded on, so high RPM won't make it explode. The downside is it's $559. Um, the other upgrade that I didn't mention that is something you should do while building is you need to press the input shaft out, seal it up with red Loctite, and press it back in. And I would always recommend putting all new bushings inside any 4L60 because they wind up with a ton of run out run out and that's what kind of helps kill them um but most likely you're going to lose your three four clutch pack and that's what the ray bestos high energy clutches are designed to try to help with they do the best they can i'm sure so i will have this list up on the driveway engineer facebook group um these are the minimum upgrades. There are more. I'm not really going to go into it. I'm not really trying to tell people how to rebuild a transmission step by step. Hiram Gutierrez has really good videos on uh, rebuilding 4L60s if you, if you need like the how-to and the step by step. But for me, it's not worth the money. It's not the the cost isn't worth the effort. So. I'm happy with my 4L80 and I'll stay that way. But hopefully this helps you out if you're hard-headed, don't want to listen, feel like throwing five, 600 bucks into a 4L60. Here's how you do it. So until next time, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends. And uh, I appreciate hearing from you guys. I appreciate all you guys who have been watching. And like I said, I'll have this document up on the drivewayengineer.com or on the Driveway Engineer Facebook group. I might put it up on the drywayengineer.com. We'll see. I have some merch up there. So until next time, we'll see you.